Good morning, afternoon, and evening, everybody. My name is Maya the King, and did you know my grandpa has the heart of a lion? Yeah, and a lifetime banned from the zoo. Now then, today we're taking a look at a game just released on Steam today called Crimson Tactics, The Rise of the White Banner. Developed and published by Black March Studios, released in early access, and selling for 30 American dollars. So in this game, it's... well, it's basically kind of like your typical Fire Emblem kind of game. I mean, at least on the outside. And it has the same kind of tropes too, evil empire moving in on other territories, good king betrayed by someone trusted, now with the nation in chaos you start as a knight for a once honorable order only to discover they are corrupt and evil and you leave them to join the rebels so you can fight evil. I mean, I've kind of seen this stuff a thousand times so it's definitely not anything new. Oh and I'm sure there will be some kind of ancient evil mixed up in all this with demons or monsters or something later on down the road. Anyway, you get to play as this guy. I'd say a name but the game lets you name him so, you know, at least there's that. So this guy, you know, he can have whatever name you want, along with his birthday, it's pretty much the only thing you get to customize him with, and you get to go out with him on your adventure being the good guy, and that's pretty much it. Now to be honest, I've been super excited and looking forward to this game, just want to get that out there, because I'm really hoping that this is going to be awesome, so let's go into it. Now on to the good and bad, followed by my final thoughts and my recommendation. So up first for the positives is the art style. Not the graphics per se, as they're decent, but they're not anything super amazing. But basically, the particulars of the art style is really nice. It totally just gives you that feel, you know, the one I'm, you know, you know what I'm talking about? Like, whenever you play these top-down anime-style tactical games, you know, just that, that feel. The art style is perfect for it and works really well. I got a big old smile on my face as I was watching it and playing it, and even though the graphics aren't, like, next-gen, they're still, you know, not bad. They're still pretty good. Attention to detail, freaking color contrast, and good lighting and bloom, like, overall, not bad. Not bad at all. Up next is the sound and the music. The sound effects are perfectly placed and appropriate. The music is that fantasy medieval style of music that you're used to hearing in these kinds of games. It's kind of generic, but it works for the game and, and for the tone that the game is going for. It has partial voice acting. There's none in the main game as of yet, but it did have some lady do some speaking in a cutscene and she did a really good job. I hope to see more stuff like that. Maybe more dialogue, maybe more voice acting. I don't want to have a whole lot because it's very clearly I don't think it's meant to be in like every bit of dialogue. And considering these games have a lot of dialogue, I don't expect all of that to be voice acted, but I would like some instances of voice acting scattered throughout. The next thing I want to talk about is the tutorial. It's done alongside the story, which is always nice, letting you experience the game while also teaching you. It's a bit wordy, but overall it's not too bad. I mean, I've definitely seen worse. It teaches you what you need to know, when you need to know it, along with visuals and highlights so that you can piece together the information that you're reading and kind of figure out what you're doing. It's a nice tutorial. The stability would be next. While I was playing, I didn't experience a single glitch, bug, or error of any kind. For an early access game, I was actually surprised at how well the game was playing. I mean, no frame rate drops or anything, and that's always really nice. It ran smooth as butter, and hell, if you had told me it was an early access game, then I would have been pretty skeptical. Last but not least is the quality of the gameplay here. Not the gameplay itself, and I have a reason for that which I'll go into later um, in the negatives, but overall the, the quality of the gameplay. There, there's a lot of good here. I mean, there's implications of what's been started here, and it's a great baseline. There seems to be a lot of stuff that still need to be unlocked as I progress through the story, but the implications of what they're going to be doing and adding to the game is very intriguing. Not to mention the depth of things that you can do during combat or outside of combat and the freedom that all of these things give you. Hell, they even allow you to make choices and decisions and dialogue options during key conversations that may or may not affect future gameplay storylines or the event of the particular cutscene that you're in. And everything seemed to work fairly well too, and it made sense, so the feel of the game is appropriate, I guess is what I'm saying. Okay, so that's all I got for the positives, and up next is the negatives, but could you do me a favor and hear me out about something? See, on YouTube, the only way for your videos to get noticed is for them to already be noticed. The only way to get your videos seen is for them to already have been seen. It's an awful paradox, and it's very, it makes it very hard for small YouTube channels like mine or brand new ones to get started. So the only way that my channel grows is if more people watch my videos so that YouTube will then help spread the word. So if you wouldn't mind helping my channel grow, please like, comment, subscribe, and most importantly, share my videos online to help them get more noticed. It helps far more than anything else, and I'd greatly appreciate it. Also, have you heard of my same-day reviews? It's about as it sounds. You make a request for a, for a review on a game you're interested in, and I'll do the, I'll buy the game, play it, and review, and put a video out all in that same day, unless I already put out a video that day. Pretty cool, huh? All right then, enough of the self-promotion, and on to the negatives. Up first for the negatives is that price tag. They want $30 for this game. As an early access 
demo, basically. I mean, you gotta remember, we are helping them to develop their game when it's released in early access. They listen to feedback and to reviews and for what we say on the forums, and we're stress testing the game, we're reporting what's wrong with it or what we like or don't like, and then they make changes and updates. We are beta testing their game for them, and yet they're charging us so much money. It's incomplete, it doesn't have voice acting, and to me personally, it just doesn't feel like it's worth that much money. At least right now. Perhaps when it's, fin when it's finished, it could be worth $30 or $40, but I don't know. For me personally, I don't like it when early access games charge these large amounts of money unless there's something huge. And this game doesn't, so far, it hasn't really shown me that it's something huge. Right now, it's kind of shown me, hey, you ever played Fire Emblem? We got a game that's similar to that. You ever play Final Fantasy Tactics Ogre, whatever it's called? We got a game like that, but then it's not finished, and it's done by an indie company, so it's like, why are you charging so much then? And I don't know, maybe that's my misunderstanding, but to me personally, I know I'm probably going to get a lot of flack for this, but I just don't agree with that price tag. The next negative I have is the gameplay. Now don't get me wrong, for the most part, the gameplay is it's, it's pretty good, it's really solid. It just has a few things that are irritating for me, so this is kind of a minor negative. Like, okay, so you'll have your typical soldier types, mages, priests, archers, knights, story units, and so on. Each has unique abilities, weapons, names, ranks, levels, and I, I could keep going on and on. So they really give the gameplay a personalization kind of feel. Even your enemies have names and faces. So the attention to detail here is incredible, and the effort they're putting in is incredible. But then they'll have a few back and forth situations. For example, on the one hand, they give you a button to speed up the combat, which is nice because it all moves kind of slow. On the other hand, even on 3x speed, it's still too slow. On the one hand, they give you a bunch of abilities and energy bars to manage. On the other hand, they don't have any tooltip bubbles to show you what class that guy is, what affinity he has, what weapon he has, what skills he has. So even though they give you a bunch of abilities and energy bars to manage, they don't give you an easy way to inspect these things, which makes everything a little bit more of a headache. No, instead you have to go into the menus and search around in the UI to find whatever it is that you're looking for with that person. Then you've got to go all the way back out to actually make a decision about what you want them to do in combat. And since there are dozens of classes and abilities and dozens of non-main character units, this will require you to basically inspect every single soldier, every single battle, to double check everything you want to know before you can do anything and make a move. Now sure, after several hours of gameplay, you'll probably figure out the majority of what this is or what that is, but why not just give us a small tooltip or something that just pops up to tell us? You in the, in the tutorial, you gave us an understanding. See this little diamond at the bottom left by your character's portrait? Top one is this, left one is that, right one is that, bottom one is this. Okay, fine, but those are vague. It's like, on the right, it's his class, but we don't know what those are yet. We don't know what those symbols are, so why not have a tooltip bar that shows us what that is? Or on the left, it's like, this is their affinity. And it's like, okay, sure, I understand ice and fire, but what about dark light, lightning, earth, whatever else other elements there are? Like, are those going to be obvious or not? And it, does that apply? And, and everybody has an affinity. Knights have an affinity to ice and water and fire and lightning, but they can't cast spells. So why do they have an affinity? Is that what they're resistant to? Is that what they're doing damage of? Like, I don't know because the game didn't tell me and those tooltips would have helped. Just give us those tooltips, because if you give us those little tooltip bubbles that pop up and briefly explain something, I mean, we can figure out the rest, and I shouldn't have to go exploring through the multiple menus and the multiple UIs for every single soldier before I make him do something. Now, they did include a pretty grateful feature of allowing you to put some of your soldiers on automatic, but sometimes they behave in really dumb ways. I mean, my healer is on auto. He's only supposed to heal, so why did he walk around twice without healing anyone, even though that one soldier over there is almost dead? Then he ignored that guy and went to go heal someone else. So maybe the AI needs a little bit of work too. And on top of all that, the gameplay is overall pretty slow. Pretty much every aspect of the game is just a little bit slower than it needs to be. And I probably saw a dozen loading screens in my first 30 minutes of gameplay and they never let up, almost always saying the exact same thing over and over again. I'm just glad the loading screens were pretty fast, or I'd have a, I, I would have had a freaking hissy fit. It looks like you could traverse the world. They have a, a menu with a bunch of different features and functions that'll come into play later that'll serve various purposes, which hold great promise, but so far each battle has just felt a bit slow and awkward. I mean, are you watching this? Notice how not a single person has a weapon drawn? I mean, why not? I mean, come on, devs, please make a change. Make it so when they're in battle, they're walking around with their weapons drawn. It just looks and feels really weird that they only pull out their weapons when they're about to strike. I don't even know if some of these units have shields or not until they pull them out for a skill. And I'd like to know that. I'd like to know. So that's pretty much all I have for the negatives. Not too bad. 
Like I said, the game is pretty well designed. It has a few missteps, sure, but it's early access. One of the reasons I, I like to do these videos is to help the video gaming community. The game needs some tweaking, maybe some things added, maybe some things taken away, and it'll be a pretty damn solid game that I could easily lose myself in for weeks. For instance, allow our units to wield weapons during battle and not only when they strike. Give the player the ability to customize the main character. Male and female options, but hey, if the story is tied to a main character being male, then at least let us customize them. In the beginning cutscene, you guys hinted that there would be three different individuals who will change the fate of the world, but then you only let us play as one. So why not let us pick which one we're, we're playing as for our main character? Maybe make combat a little bit faster? Give us tooltips that pop up when we hover over something? That way, we know what class the person is without having to go digging through the UI. I mean, I was looking at three people, all of them looked completely different, turned out they were all the exact same. A mage. So, you know, it's stuff like that. Basically, the game just needs some organization, it needs some tweaking, it needs some polishing, and maybe a slight price reduction, at least while it's in early access. Do I recommend this game, as of right now? Absolutely. Look, I know I've got my issues with the game, but in my opinion, they're all minor. And yeah, the story is kind of generic, but it's handled more maturely than others. Is it missing some stuff, and is it a bit awkward at times? Sure. But for the rest of the time, the game was fu a fun, engaging experience. I still feel that $30 is a bit too pricey, but it's hard to judge when I haven't played it all the way through and seen everything the game offers. Overall, the game to me was a lot of fun, it was designed fairly well, especially for an early access game, and I definitely think it's one worth checking out. Alright everybody? Okay, so that's all the time I got for this video. Thanks so much for deciding to check it out. If you have any questions or concerns, please let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I can't wait to see you all again on my next adventure. So until then, I bid you all farewell.